traveled to the International Space Station on Boeing Starliner back in June. It was supposed to be a 10-day mission, but this morning they're entering day 65 and have been told they may not return until next year. Mysterious area of space pulling entire galaxies toward itself, astronauts' DNA altering after prolonged periods in space, and questions about the nature of our existence itself. These are unsettling discoveries in deep space that challenge reality. About 150 to 250 million light years from our galaxy is a strange, unsettling cosmic anomaly known as the Great Attractor. It's a region of space with such a powerful gravitational pull that it can draw entire galaxies toward itself, causing them to collide and merge. What makes the Great Attractor even more mysterious is that scientists can't fully explain its mass. There's not enough visible matter around it to account for the gravitational force that it exerts, so research researchers really have no idea what lies at the center of it. The Great Attractor is found in the so-called Zone of Avoidance, a part of the universe that's obscured from our view. So studying this region isn't really an easy task. Now I know what you're probably wondering, will our galaxy be destroyed by this unknown Lovecraftian horror at some point? Well fortunately the answer seems to be no. While the Milky Way is being pulled toward the Great Attractor, dark energy is simultaneously pushing galaxies up part throughout the universe. So even though we're drawn in, we're unlikely to ever collide with the Great Attractor itself. Long periods spent in space can actually alter our DNA. An astronaut named Scott Kelly, who spent nearly a year aboard the International Space Station, experienced some odd side effects. When he got back to Earth in 2016, there was some surprising changes that caught the attention of scientists. One of the first things he noticed was that he'd grown about two inches taller than his identical twin brother, Mike Kelly, who'd been on Earth the entire time. Like, you know, like most people tend to do. Now, growing two inches taller as an adult, that's a pretty sweet deal. Not a negative side effect in the slightest. Send me to space if that's all that happens. But that wasn't it. When researchers did examinations on Scott, they discovered something even weirder. Not only did he have a different gut microbiome, but his DNA was now different than his brother. Identical twins typically share the same genetic makeup. These changes were thanks to the unique stresses of living in space, like exposure to cosmic radiation and the microgravity environment, which can alter cellular processes. Turns out the conditions Scott faced in space had caused his cells to essentially rewrite parts of his genetic code. And unfortunately, he eventually shrank back to his original height, but the changes in his DNA were permanent. This means that in a biological sense, Scott and Mike Kelly are no longer identical twins. Now, this was after one year in space. Makes you wonder what a Affect longer periods of space travel would have on us. Shortly after the Big Bang, the universe was a hot, dense soup filled with particle-antiparticle pairs. When these particles came into contact, they annihilated each other, transforming into pure energy. But scientists have asked a very important question. If particle-antiparticle pairs were perfectly balanced, we should only have energy in the universe with no matter at all. But that's not the case, because you're sitting here watching me talk about this on a computer in your apartment or house or whatever. The point is the cosmos is teeming with matter. So this must mean that some particles survived this annihilation process, allowing for the creation of everything we see today. This phenomenon, where matter predominates over antimatter, is referred to as the baryon asymmetry problem. One hypothesis is that the fundamental laws of physics just may have been entirely different at the moment of the Big Bang, changing how matter and antimatter interacted, but it's still an ongoing mystery. Our Milky Way galaxy will one day collide with another galaxy. The Andromeda galaxy, our largest and closest galactic neighbor, is heading straight for us. Now, this will happen over the next several billion years. When the two galaxies finally collide, it won't be this sudden crash. It'll be an incredibly gradual process, taking millions of years due to the vast distances we're talking about here. And even though the galaxies will merge, the stars in them are so far apart that it's unlikely the stars will collide with each other. But 
you never know. As Andromeda approaches, the night sky will change, constellations will shift, and the night sky will look totally different as the two galaxies fuse. Over time, we'll have a new galaxy altogether. Again though, there's no immediate need to worry. This collision is billions of years away, far beyond the time frame that concerns us today. Humans probably won't even exist by then, at least not in the form we are now. We'll either be long extinct, or we'll have splintered off to other planets evolving into different beings. All the same though, it is kind of an eerie reminder that really nothing around us is permanent. Some physicists entertain a pretty mind-bending idea that our universe might actually be a hologram. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean we're living in some fake simulation like in the Matrix. Instead, the holographic principle suggests that our three-dimensional universe may be projected from a distant two-dimensional surface that contains all the necessary information to describe our reality. Kind of like how a hologram appears three-dimensional even though it's being encoded on a flat surface. We might be living in a universe that's fundamentally two-dimensional. It's a strange sounding concept, but it does simplify some complex problems in physics. When physicists apply the holographic principle in their calculations, they find that it makes a lot of equations easier to solve. Leonard Susskind, who helped form this idea, states that it's not just a wild theory, it's a practical tool used a lot in theoretical physics. The idea traces back to paradoxes surrounding black holes. One major issue is the black hole information loss problem. Problem. Stephen Hawking discovered that black holes emit radiation and eventually evaporate, which raises the question, if a black hole disappears, what happens to the information of anything that fell into it? Well, some scientists think that the information isn't lost and instead leaves a two-dimensional imprint on the black hole's event horizon. The fine-tuning problem states that even the slightest changes to the fundamental laws and constants of our universe could cause it to be completely inhospitable to life as we know it. For example, if gravity or the strong nuclear force were adjusted by even a fraction, the result might be a universe without stars, planets, and life as we know it. Everything around us is just so perfectly set up for matter to exist, it seems fine-tuned. So was it specifically designed for life? Well, some scientists think there may be multiple universes and that our universe is just one of countless others, each with its own set of laws and constants. It could be that we just happen to be lucky enough to exist in the universe where conditions are just right for life to flourish, while other universes may be filled with completely different matter or no matter at all. And speaking of multiverses, let's talk about string theory, which proposes that instead of viewing particles as these tiny dots, think of them as incredibly small, vibrating strings. The theory goes that there are these extra dimensions, so tiny and curled up that we can't perceive them in our daily lives. Mathematicians refer to these curled up dimensions as calibi yao manifolds, complex shapes that help describe the hidden aspects of our universe. These extra dimensions can have different configurations, sort of like different radio stations, each broadcasting a unique signal. Each configuration could represent a different set of physical laws and constants, the rules that govern how things operate in a particular universe. Here's something fun to think about. Earth is constantly under attack from high energy particles shot out from the sun. Fortunately, our planet's magnetic field shields us from them, deflecting most of these solar threats. But there are times when magnetic disturbances in the sun lead to extra powerful solar flares. These explosive bursts release tons of x-rays and energy that travel at the speed of light, often resulting in disruptions to navigation and communication systems. Another threat comes from coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, which happen when the sun ejects large clouds of magnetized particles into space. The CME is directed towards Earth. We experience geomagnetic storms a few days later, which can be bad for communications and power. The craziest geomagnetic storm recorded in modern history was the Carrington event of 1859. At that time, technology was of course not as advanced, so not really much happened, but if a similar storm were to strike today, the consequences would be much more noticeable. The internet could go down, we could have months without it. Sounds kinda nice, actually, but just think of how much we rely on the internet 
in our daily lives. It would be a pretty big adjustment. The likelihood of a storm of this size happening again is about 1 to 6 to 12 percent each decade. Not a likely chance, but by no means minuscule either. Another threat lurking in the cosmos is the possibility of a catastrophic supernova. When a massive star reaches the end of its life, it can explode in a spectacular display known as a supernova. This unleashes intense waves of radiation that can obliterate anything within what's called the kill zone. Astronomers estimate that this hazardous area extends about 40 to 50 light years from the explosion. And no, fortunately, there are no stars this close to Earth that are expected to explode anytime soon, but even more distant supernovas can emit high energy x-rays and gamma rays that may interact with Earth's atmosphere, and there's a potential for this interaction to damage the ozone layer, allowing harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun to penetrate more easily, posing a risk to life on our planet. The closest supernova observed in the last 400 years was SN 1987A, discovered in the large megalanic cloud on February 23rd of 1987. The explosion was incredibly bright, shining with the energy of around 100 million stars for several months. Back in 2015, scientists in Hawaii noticed something strange, a huge, empty patch where there should have been 10,000 galaxies. They called it a cold spot because it seemed like everything there had just disappeared. Now, scientists at Durham University came up with a pretty fascinating idea about this mysterious cold spot. They think it might have been the result of our universe colliding with another universe, almost like two giant soap bubbles bumping into each other. When these universes collide, it could push all the energy and stuff out of a specific area, creating a big, empty space, the cold spot. We might be living in one bubble universe out of trillions, and this cold spot could be the aftermath of a collision with another bubble universe. Just another mind-boggling idea to try and wrap your head around. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.